travel to Southeast Asia is extremely cheap. But is it possible to make it even cheaper? Join me as I showcase my three day no accommodation challenge here on Koh Rong Island. So when you don't have accommodation lined up, that forces you to keep on the move all the time. And that allows you to extract as much as you can from your time here on Koh Rong Island. First thing I saw when I arrived at Koh Rong was the small little tiny island of Koh Tu. I love uninhabited islands. One and a half kilometers to get to Koh Tu. So this thing looked perfect for the first night's camp. But unfortunately I arrived there and it was surrounded by boats, people going around with jet skis. There wasn't many places to hide, but I was able to walk around the island. The snorkeling there was amazing. Lots of fish to see there. I decided to try my luck finding a campsite on the main island of Koh Rong. So it was another 1.5 kilometers back to the land. The sun was starting to set. I want to capture the sunset, but I also want to find out where I'm going to be sleeping. I don't want to be setting up stuff in the dark on a mysterious island. They're doing a lot of construction on Koh Rong. It's a really emerging Cambodian paradise island. I made my way through the construction site and I set up the hammock. I was pretty stoked and relieved to be able to have some accommodation for the night. Made my way back to the beach to catch an epic sunset. Wow, that was incredible. Then I just wandered up and down the beach during the night time. It's pretty cool to see like how you can live on this island in complete opulence. I was basically camping right next to five star resort. It was like $200 a night, but I was like sleeping in my hammock like on the outskirts of the resort there. Then I was pretty tired. It was time to go to bed. So I waited for an opportunity and I, I had the lights off because I didn't want people from the resort seeing me go into the construction area. That was a great night's sleep. So I woke up on the second day. I had to quickly take down my hammock. I had to sneak my way through the resort area. Had a can of coffee. I was hoping to be greeted with an amazing sunrise. But there was no sunrise. It was cloudy as hell. It really looked like all gloom and doom was about to unleash. And it did. Holy moly! The rain just came pouring down. Luckily, I had packed up everything and I just ran to some overpriced resort. Got myself a cup of coffee and just waited for the rain to stop. Once the rain subsided, oh, I needed to make my way to the western side of the island. So the quickest way to do it was to walk two and a half kilometers through the treacherous jungle. Holy crap! That was a traumatic two and a half kilometers. Let me tell you. Run the clip. But eventually I made it. Once I arrived on the western side of the island, I was greeted with an eight kilometer long pristine white sand beach. And decided to swim out to the pier and have a little look around. So once I was done snorkeling, that pretty much took me to sunset. Spectacular sunset. Hardly anyone on this side of the island, guys. If you want to come to Koh Rong and you want to have a relaxing holiday, you come to this western side of the island. It's where I am now. Absolutely incredible. So after the sunset, I've heard that there's some bioluminescent plankton on Koh Rong. I went snorkeling at night to see if I could see some plankton. But yeah, all I saw was a tiny little fish. I was super tired. I wasn't in the mood to go and set up a tarp in the dark. So I decided to do a cowboy camp just right here on the beach. 
Literally, I did it just over there. What is cowboy camping? Cowboy camping is sleeping under the stars without any shelter. So all I had was a blow up mattress, a pillow, a sleeping bag liner, and I put a mosquito net around my head. I wasn't hiding away. If you just walked along the beach, you'd see me lying there. But there was no one on the beach. So I had an awesome night under the stars, great night's sleep. and woke up to a spectacular sunrise super stoked even though we're on day three there's still activities to complete before we leave this island so i had to make my way past all the resorts back to the southern end of the island it was about a five kilometers walk and continued on with the adventure so instead of uh, hiking through the massive jungle behind me i'm gonna be walking along this road the snorkeling here should be amazing because it's all rocks and reef i'm hoping that there's gonna be some kind of a track along the way that i can get down to the water's edge and jump in and go for a snorkel absolutely perfect this is what i wanted <laughs> So I just couldn't help myself. I'm like totally fascinated with these abandoned houses. I mean, literally I've come across like 30 of these things just built and left. So here there's still a bit of the ceiling left. Here the ceilings all collapsed. Now the effort that you have to take to bring all these materials to the island to build all this stuff and then just leave it absolutely vacant. It's like incredible waste. Cambodia is one of the poorest countries in Asia. And you know, there's not a lot of money flying around, but in Sihanoukville and this place, there's money flying around. They're even, they're building an airport here, but this is not a good sign for uh, the prospect of tourism because obviously you built this, you want to make some money or for someone to buy it. And obviously no one wanted to buy it. Anyone thinking of coming to Cambodia needs to add this island to their itinerary. With its striking beauty and its wide variety of quality snorkeling spots, you just can't go wrong on Koh Rong. Now you definitely don't have to do a no accommodation challenge because there's a wide variety of accommodation options ranging from tents with a fan at 7 US dollars a night to 1500 US dollars a night for your own private island experience with a Bora Bora style villa protruding out into the ocean and I'm definitely not paying $1,500 a night and I just enjoy the freedom of being able to just go wherever you want and you don't have to worry about getting back to your accommodation because you're carrying your accommodation on your back. I really enjoyed this uh, multi-day no accommodation challenge. I'm gonna see if I can up the ante in the next one. Let's try and do a three nights and see how we go.